my name is John Cordy and this is a video about how to solo over the chords of the chicken, isn't it? That's what this video is going to be. You're having a good Saturday or whenever you're actually watching this video. I guess probably most of you who find this video won't be watching it on a Saturday. Today I wanted to look at a set of changes which I find a little bit tricky but I was asked by Patreon member Jack Roy if I would take a look at this so I thought yes. So the tune is called The Chicken and Jacko Pistorius wrote this, not the sprinter. Um, anyway, so yeah, we're in kind of B flat blues, B flat dominant, um, B flat seven, all of this stuff. So we get these changes which go. So you're switching between B flat and E flat there to an E flat seven to D7, to G7, to C7. So, you've heard the tune most likely, uh, otherwise why are you looking at how to play a solo over it? So, we notice they're all dominant seven chords. I'm kind of playing it shell voicings. So I think that'd be the, the first thing that I would try to do. So we've got this thing called a shell voicing, which is built using like the seventh, the third, and the root. Just about there. The seventh, the third, and the root. So if we've got B flat here, we've got the B flat on the sixth fret, we've got the A flat, the flat seven there on the sixth fret, and on the seventh fret we have our third. And you'll notice that if you want to get to the E flat, you can just do this. And then you've got the third of the E flat here. And the flat seven of the E flat, the D flat here on the sixth fret. So you get this. And you could follow that all the way. So maybe you try doing that all the way through. So you're kind of slowly thinking, okay, right, there's my third and my seventh. Then for the E flat, there's my third and my seventh. And then for the D. There's my third and my seventh. And then for the G, there's my third and seventh. And for the C, there's my third and seventh, etc. And on and on. So you could do that all over the neck, right? Because you could have, there's the B flat, there's the E flat, and there's a D7, and there's the G, there's a C7, etc. So maybe you map up these map out, map up, whatever you want to do, these shell voicings so that you can play the chords and find them all over the neck without too much trouble. And notice that that relationship of the third and the seven is following. Because that could give you like a, a good roadmap for how to solo over this. So they're all flat seven, dominant seven chords. So you could think about all of these as being the fifth of whatever scale would work with them. So you could think of them all as like mixolydian or E flat mixolydian or D mixolydian, G mixolydian, C mixolydian. The only trick with this is that it's probably going to be a little bit difficult by the time you do the circle of fifths thing because you've got a quick shift and it might not be super easy for you to imagine what's happening. So maybe you'd think about it in that way for a bit. So you think, right, okay, B flat mixolydian. Then to the E flat mixolydian. To the D mixolydian. Uh, to the G mixolydian. But yeah, you see once you get from the D, you're thinking about fairly big shapes then aren't you and you're thinking all right D mixolydian so you're gonna likely play the D and then you're thinking what G mixolydian and then C mixolydian So I think that might not be the best way to think about it. That was the way that I would have approached it in the past. The next way that I think probably has some benefit would be to take some sort of 
um, melody, and like we did this the other day with the Robin Ford thing. So kind of this thing. So for each chord, I'm thinking, right, I want the seventh, I want the third, the fifth, the sixth, and the fifth again. And then we move to the E flat, to the D, to the G, to the C. And then we've got like a piece of melodic content. But you notice there is that little jump there, which might not be super consonant. So stay with this idea anyway. And then the G, right, which is the, the visualization trouble starts here because you've got to do a, a jump, right? So, or, or, So maybe for the G you could do something different. So we get for the D and for the G we start on the third, then to the flat seven and then for the C we go back to the normal. The other thing we could do is this kind of thing. So you get the D. And you see there, I'm playing like a 13 chord. We've got the B up in the top, the six. And then we just play the D flat for the G because that's a tritone substitution. And then that's the C. So hopefully I was doing something with that that maybe sounded okay in the intro. The reason for that, I'm thinking, is because I don't want to interrupt that D7 to the C7 by my visualization chucking me way down to here. And I'm thinking, if I just use that tritone sub for whatever I'm doing on the D7, that might lead to some better results. So I think that might be my, my best suggestion for this, might be whatever you're doing over the D7, do it over the C7, but between the two, drop down a fret as well. So you get this kind of... Okay, the other thing that you can think about is because each of these are dominant seven chords, come at it from a slightly jazzier angle, and so over the B flat seven, you're thinking that it's a two five. So you're thinking F minor to B flat seven. And then for the E flat, you'd be thinking B flat minor. For the D, you'd be thinking A minor to D. For the G, you'd be thinking D minor to G. And then for the C, G minor to C, right? So then you'd get uh, kind of two fives to everything. Um, practice that super slowly, I guess, to start with. And then what was it, D minor to G? and then G minor to C. That might be a, a cool strategy as well. And then the very last thing that I think of is kind of triad pairs. So for the B flat, you've got kind of, you could think of your B flat triad, because it's a seven chord, you could also build from the triad 
from the flat seven. So you'd have like an A flat over B flat. And then for the E flat, you'd have a D flat over E flat. And then for the D, you'd have a C over D. And then for the G, you'd have an F over G. And then a B flat over C for the C. Um, this is just kind of a visualization thing because then you could do and then D flat to E flat and then the G one back to C try that and the the very last suggestion on this is then if you want to make things sound more right side you do the try it above where you are so you do like a, a C try it over the B flat and you do an F try it over the E flat and then you do an E triad over the D, and then you do an A triad over the G, and then a D triad over the C. Just some strategies that you could consider. I'm gonna to put together a backing track in the intro now, but I think that roughly covers how I do it. So I'd try the shell voicings first. And notice that descending relationship throughout. Um, so, then maybe try the the mixolydian thing a bit. Try the blues scale. Actually, for most of the the tune, except for when we get to the D, you could think about the the B flat blues. So. Use that to kind of be your resting point for the tune. that then what else did we say we tried the two five kind of idea try the the melody for every kind of thing and then also notice that little opportunity for a tritone sub between the D and the C and I think that roughly covers it the the two five thing the tritone opportunity and then also the the triad pairs and the outside triad pair and So hopefully that was vaguely helpful. I'll put together a little worksheet for this and a backing track now. Hopefully that was useful for you, Jack Croyd. That's how I'm thinking that I would strategize some of this stuff and what I would practice so that hopefully when I come to play the thing, I've got a whole kind of bag of tricks that I could think about and visualize what's going on so that it's not just random to me. Those are some of the strategies that I would put in place and things that I would practice so that I've got different bits and pieces that I could come to for that kind of solo. Feel free to like and subscribe. This is probably not going to do well on YouTube, but it was possibly worth it anyway. Cheers.